Hey everybody, it's Dad Son of the Game, and it's a very different episode than normal. Uh, we actually are doing kind of a preview uh, for a game that is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, the game is called Marrying Mr. Darcy, and it is uh, by Erica and Eric, and I won't even try and say their last names because I'll butcher them. But if you want more information, we will have a link in the comments to check out this Kickstarter. It goes until about mid-October. Um, we've got an advanced copy that we've been playing for the last few days. Um, I've played it quite a few times in the last uh, couple days here. It's really a pretty cool little game. Um, so at any rate, uh, let's take a look at how this game plays out. Um, yeah. So the game is Marrying Mr. Darcy, and this is the Pride and Prejudice card game available on Kickstarter. Uh, this is kind of a neat game, and it's got a theme different than anything else I've ever played because we're playing as single ladies who are trying to get married. Um. But it's pretty cool. So at any rate, um, here's how the game works. On your turn, you draw an event card, and your event says something different on it every time because the events are all pretty unique. And you do what the event says, and then you make sure you only have five cards in your hand at the end. And basically the events will allow you to put cards down in front in your tableau here. Um, and you're trying to develop basically suits, uh, sets of cards in different colors. So that way you can meet the criteria of these men to ask you to marry them. So this one says, discover your true nature. Ooh, this is a crazy card, by the way. Uh, you read a letter that reveals your prejudices. You realize that you do not know yourself. Discard your top wit, beauty, reputation, and friendliness cards from your character. Draw four new cards and play them immediately. So, friendliness, wit, and reputation cards. I would discard, and I would draw four of these character cards. One, two, three, four, and immediately put them down. So I, I'm more beautiful all of a sudden now, and I am also more friendly, and more friendly, and have some more wit. So that worked out really well for me. So anyway, we keep playing this game until the stack of event cards here is gone. So, Luke, here's your event. And it is Scandal. Oh no, that's the rated PG-13 card. Your dress was far too revealing. Discard your top character reputation card. Luke's wearing a far too revealing dress and will have to discard one of his reputation cards. Wah, wah, wah. And that'll teach you to dress more modestly, son. <laughs> so, we keep doing this till all these event cards are gone. And when you play with only two people, you only use about half the event cards. Here's, you know, another bit of the event cards that come with the game. Um, so we'll just pretend like we went through all these event cards, and then we go to the second phase of the game, which is a proposal game. So we built up this these cards, and there's two kinds of cards here. These are character cards that give us different traits as a character. So I'm Linda uh, Lydia Bennett, and I'm the most outgoing Bennett sister. And I have a special power that when a party happens, I get to do something cool. Um, but I also have a dowry of one, so that means that I get one on my dowry, um, and then I also have amassed five beauty cards, one reputation, uh, five friendliness cards, and five wit cards. In all the games we've played so far, this would be a really high hand. But this is all the people, these are all, this is, these are all the people who would want to propose to me. Well, I have to check their, their requirements. So he, Mr. Collins will, I know Mr. Wickham doesn't want to, he wants someone who's rich, who has at least two dowry. And I only have one dowry. So... Mr. Wickham's not going to ask me to marry him. Mr. Collins, however, wants someone with two beauty and two reputation. Well, my reputation is a little low for Mr. Collins. Mr. Denny wants someone with two friendliness and two wit. I have that. And then we have uh, Colonel Fitzwilliam, who wants three dowry and two on the reputation or five reputation. I certainly don't have that. Mr. Bingley wants five on the beauty or five on the friendliness, and I have both of those. And here's the prize of prizes. Mr. Darcy, he wants five wit. So I have that as well. So now that I've done this, I roll to see if I will get a proposal. Um, but before that, there were some cards face down here. Um, Luke had some, I had some. These are what they call cunning cards, and they basically are like an initiative. So whoever has the highest number of cunning cards at the end gets to roll first. So... Luke would have beat me on this one. He would have cunning of two, and I only have cunning of one. So he would normally get to find his suitors first and get proposed to first. But since I already put mine out, I'll just show you how the process works. 
Um, Mr. Denny, I roll, and it's a two, so he wouldn't propose to me anyway. And then this one's for Mr. Bingley. And he had rolled a three, he wouldn't propose either. I have to roll a four, five, or six for them to propose. And then the last one is Mr. Darcy, who I think I really want to marry me. Um, not really, actually. So on, Ly on Lydia Bennett, it tells me on the back side of the card, uh, it tells me who I want to have marry me. And I wanted Mr. Denny to marry me, and unfortunately he wouldn't marry me. I'm stuck with Mr. Darcy, who's like really the prize, but he's only worth eight happiness points to her. So I get eight happiness points because I'm married to Mr. Darcy. Um, and I made the title of the game work for me, but I am not that happy, honestly. And now Mr. Miss Caroline Bingley gets to see who she would marry. Well, she has two friendliness and um, two, two wit, so Mr. Denny would be interested. And a dowry of three, so Mr. Wickham would be interested. And two beauty and two reputation, so Mr. Collins would be. Uh, not five on the reputation, and not five beauty or five on that. So you would roll for these three gentlemen to be your suitor, or to propose. They are your suitors, I suppose. Ooh, Mr. Wickham. Now this is good that he did this. He has a proposal for Mr. Wickham. But if you look on the back of his card, Mr. Wickham's his least wanted to be married suitor. So he has a choice now. This is kind of a press your luck aspect of this game. So now he gets to choose if he wants to roll a second time for Mr. Collins, who Mr. Collins is a little better. Like she wants Mr. Collins more than Mr. Wickham. So she's like, I'm going to hold out for Mr. Collins or not. And she wants Mr. Denny even more. So I'm going to say he wants to go again. Oh man, Mr. Collins wants to marry you too. So do you keep pushing your luck and go for Mr. Denny or not? Yes. So, now you roll for Mr. Denny. Oh, and you rolled a magic die one. So what happens when he really rolled a five? He would really marry Mr. Denny. He'd be very happy and they'd live forever. But I want to show something else here. If he rolled a one, he becomes the old maid. And the old maid's the awesomest card in this whole game because the flavor text is hilarious. It says, the old maid, you are old. Nobody wants to marry you. Dun, dun, dun. And then the best you can hope for is to write a best-selling book for 10 points based on the roll on the back side. So you'd roll for that. And this says you become the governess of a wealthy family plus four points. So the way we find our, our total points then is these points that we use to like kind of calculate our characteristics um, add towards not our cunning points but our character points add towards our final score. So I have a happiness rating on the back of my card of... Um, a happiness rating of 8 for marrying Mr. Darcy, plus I have uh, 5 on my beauty, 1 reputation, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 when I had my friendliness, plus another 5. So I think that's 16. I'm not awesome at math. So 16 plus 8 is 24. I have 24 points. Luke ends up with... Let's say you did do the uh, old man and you got four points. Okay. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So Luke got slaughtered this time. All because he had a scandal and he wore a dress that was far too revealing. So, at any rate, uh, let's go back and think about our thoughts on this game. Think about our thoughts. Think about our thoughts with dad, son, and a game. All right. We're going to go think about our thoughts. This game gets me choked up every time. <laughs> anyway, um, Pride and Prejudice, uh, card game, Marrying Mr. Darcy, very cool game. I'm getting ahead of myself giving you my thoughts and reviews on it, but it's for two to six players. It plays in uh, 45, or it's, I think they say 30 to 60 minutes. I couldn't see a game probably going past 45, and I think we've gotten some games done at about 20. Um, but that's us moving through it pretty quick. If you're really going to do the cool things and like read the cards aloud and like kind of almost like role play this game, it could take up to 60 minutes probably. At any rate, um, the recommended age is 12 and up. Uh, I think it would be able to be played by a, a younger audience than that. Um, so yeah. So Luke, what do you think? I know this game gets you choked up every time because you're a romantic. Anyway. <laughs> The components, I really like the cards because it's nice and sturdy and it's more than just like 
flappy cardboard. I also like the art because they did a really good job, or should I say he did a really good job? Yeah, it was the designer's uh, boyfriend or husband, I think it's husband, did the art, and he's got a background in comics, and I mean, it's cool art, it's very cool art, for an independent game especially. But we only played with a prototype because um, it's, not out it's yet. earlier, yeah. And we don't know for sure yet if it's going to be like that, so. Yeah, but even in this prototype, the art was awesome, and the cards were perfectly good. Um, yeah, so what about, what else? Um, and fun, you get really involved with the game, because... You can see how choked up he was. <laughs> Just keep it together for this review. <laughs> Okay, anyway, for fun, you get really involved because I got this really bad card one time and it like messed up the whole game for me and I was so involved <laughs> that I ended up banging my head on the table for like five minutes because <laughs> it like screwed up the whole game for me. But, um... He had his eye on Mr. Darcy. He was like, oh. <laughs> the end is kind of random. Like it's different than the rest of the game but I know there are some people out there who like random stuff so yeah and then family um I wouldn't really recommend it for like five-year-old boys because the whole marrying having to be a girl is kind of keep it away from younger kid type things I don't know They'd have to be secure in their masculinity, huh? Yeah, but it's very easy to learn. Like, I probably learned it in about five minutes. Because if you learn the first round, you can pretty much do the rest of the game. Overall, um, the art is just awesome. I'm just going to say that. Um, also... I like how it all plays out because at the end you have those colored, um, I should call them icons, and all you really have to do is add to figure out what your stats are, and it's easy to match up. But also, I like how it plays out, like, it just plays out really nicely because if you... Again, if you learn how to do the first round, you can do it the rest of the round. I learned it in five minutes, and yeah. Good. My thoughts on this game are, it's different. It's different than the rest of the games on my shelf, and that makes it good, um, because it is a different appeal than going through a dungeon, or uh, building a city, or uh, developing a kingdom fighting bad guys. It's about love. And the thing that's weird about this game is this is the game that if I had to say if any of these games identify with my real life I mean like I've never been a firefighter so Flashpoint isn't me. I mean I want to be heroic like that but it's not who I am. And uh, I've never you know gone into a blazing building to save somebody and I've never like slayed a dragon. And if you think you've slayed a dragon before um, maybe get help. But at any rate, uh, this game is closer to real life because I think all of us have had crushes and heartbreak and um, been worried about like how we're perceived by the opposite gender or uh, a suitor, I guess. Um, so, I mean, even, even nine-year-old Luke here could identify on some level to what it's like to try and impress someone that you your heart goes pitter-patter for. So, I mean... <laughs> You realize the whole world's going to hear this, right? I, yes. I didn't say that you like a particular girl. Would you like me to say who you like? No. <laughs> anyway, uh, I can identify with this because there, I mean, there were times where, you know, you had a few girls that you were interested in and they all had different strengths and they all had different things that were appealing about them and they liked you for different reasons. 
And so, like, you can't, it'd be really cool in real life if you could put a numerical value on it and say, oh, man, if I end up with, uh, you know, Gene, I'll end up with 10 points of happiness. But if I end up with Kristen, I end up with 16 points. And Kristen and Gene are my wife's names, like her first and middle name. So they're both Kristen, my wife. So I'm not dumb. I know not to put any other names in there, but my wife's names. So anyway, uh, the whole like getting married and finding love is something that I think people can understand. And that's pretty cool. And I think I kind of mentioned this earlier, but this theme, like having to role play as a girl who's trying to find love in the early 1800s, um, makes me understand that sometimes when I ask Kristen, my wife, to play as like a, like paladin or something, it may not be the easiest thing for her to identify. And it wasn't super easy for me to identify at first, at least, to like, I'm trying to get this dapper young gentleman to get my attention on, or get his attention onto me. But as the game progressed, I think it got better and better as far as like, Luke's right, you do get pretty involved in the game. And you're like, I need to get my wit higher or else I'll never get, I'll never get uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. I don't remember their names right now. I've never read Pride and Prejudice. So I guess you don't have to read Pride and Prejudice to enjoy the game because I liked it. Um, but at any rate, uh, it's cool because it appeals to non-traditional gaming audiences. And even with traditional gaming audiences, I played this with like, uh, I'm trying to think here. I played it with six different guys and two different girls. And the guys were all into it. They thought, well, by the end of the game, they were way into it. And they were like, give me the die. I've got to roll and see. And so, I mean, it's it's a fun game. It's definitely a fun game. And as far as my thoughts on it, um, if you're a guy out there with a wife, buy it. Because your wife will enjoy it and you'll enjoy playing it with your wife. Because it's just a fun game about romance. And if you're a single guy out there, um, and you're a hardcore gamer. Um, sometimes hardcore gamers have reputations for not being ladies' men. Um, if you're one of those hardcore gamers that's not a ladies' man and you own this game, this would be a good icebreaker for you. Be like, hey, I've got this card game based on Pride and Prejudice. And um, it'd be a cool game for you to break out on a first date or something, too, to show that you love games, but also to show that you have an interest in the woman's heart. And that's uh, one of my favorite authors, Donald Miller has a little part in one of his books about how he talks about how he kept a copy of Pride and Prejudice on his bookshelf because it showed women that he was sensitive and that he was um, able to understand a woman's heart. And like he had read Pride and Prejudice and he says that that's legitimately true. And maybe I should read Pride and Prejudice. Maybe I'll start with Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Um, but at any rate, uh, this game has in created some interest in that book for me, actually. So uh, I'm going to try and stop rambling now and condense my thoughts down to this last little bit here. It's a great game to get non-traditional gamers involved in gaming. Um, so you're going to be able to get wives and girlfriends and people like that to think that this game is cool more than you will some other games. And it does get you involved. It gets you hooked and you really enjoy it. And it, it uh, it's a fun game. It's a really fun game. So at any rate, I suggest it. The link for the Kickstarter is in the comments. Um, so check it out. At any rate, it's a cool game, and I think as us personally, uh, as a review, family review show, this is one that we get behind because it gets that non-traditional family gaming dy dynamic going. Um, what's your overall thought on it, number-wise and everything? Probably number-wise, eight and a half. Whoa! Seriously? Yeah, because you get really involved with the game, and... When you get really involved, you usually have a lot of fun. Eight and a half here, too. And it's because if I was going to have, like, my best guy friends around to play games with, I probably wouldn't pull this one off the shelf. But that said, this game is so much fun to play with my wife. Um, and it's definitely mom approved. She thought it was really fun. We played it back to back, which for her to play a game back to back like this is almost unheard of. So... It definitely appeals to her, um, and I, I think it's cool because this is the secret part. I feel like it's almost like an introduction into RPGs or like a game where you buff a character to go do some kind of task. So like, I don't know, it almost feels like romantic munchkin. I don't know. So um, you can like have a hidden agenda when you get someone to play this game to try and introduce them to something different and something new. Anyway. 
Uh, eight and a half here too. And eight and a half in the most non-traditional way possible. But it's a great game. So go kickstart it. Very cool. We enjoy it. That's it. I rambled a ton in this video. Sorry about that. Bye. <laughs> are you choked up still or are you okay? Okay, I, I, stop recording it. <laughs>